Hey everybody, welcome as we continue our uh, walk through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Uh, a couple weeks ago we were on question 8, uh, which is how doth God execute his decrees? Uh, the answer to that is God execute his decrees in the works of creation and providence. Uh, last uh, couple weeks we've been talking specifically about his works of creation, about uh, how God created made all things out of nothing. We use kind of a real world example to roughly relate to this in the building of a house. The physical building of a house could be something related to the works of creation or putting something together. Um, but is in just is so minuscule compared to what God actually accomplished in making things out of nothing. Um, then last week we talked about um, how God created man. Um, thinking this week, we're going to discuss the works of providence. Uh, going back to that same uh, building of a house example, uh, once the house is completed, being built, uh, the work's not done. There's still things to be done around it. It has to be maintained uh, through preserving and protecting it uh, from things like the elements, wear and tear, possibly animals. Um, we may even limit uh, or govern. You'll understand why I use govern in a minute, but we may limit or govern or control certain things that happen. Like we wouldn't have a water balloon fight inside of the house. That's something we would do outside because we don't want to destroy it. Um, so that somewhat relates to the sustaining or control we would have um, very loosely related to God's control, God's uh, works of providence. And that's what we're going to talk about today in question 11, which is what are God's works of providence? Uh, God's works of providence are his most holy, wise, powerful, preserving, and governing of all creatures and all their actions. Uh, so in the works, in God's works of providence, he preserves and he governs. Uh, now we're going to dig in a little more into both of these. We're going to start off with God preserves. So God preserves. Uh, in Hebrews 1 verse 3, it says, He upholds the universe by the word of his power. We talked about this the other day. Think of just the, the, the strength of the word of his power. I mean, this isn't like a muscular holding holding this up physically by hand. This is just by his word. His word is that powerful. Um, in that, we realize that God is the one that really is holding us up. He's the one in control. Um, if it were not for God, all things would pass away. Uh, even Satan couldn't exist. Um, if God didn't sustain him uh, in his existence of the, of the word of his power. Um, God is, is with us all at the same time. If you've been with us during our uh, discussion on Sunday nights about the attributes of God, you've, you've heard about this, heard this. Um, I'm going to use a, a, a passage out of Acts 17. It says, Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. So as Christians, uh, we should be comforted by that. An example I think of is peacefully sleeping in the midst of a storm. We should be um, at ease knowing God is there to preserve and to keep us. That we're just, we're calm. We're sleeping in the, in the storms of the world. We're just that comfortable about it. Uh, so God preserves. He also governs. Uh, we see in Psalm 103, it says, The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Uh, God has complete control over nature. We see that in Matthew 5. It says he makes uh, the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. And then in Psalm 104, it says, You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and for and the plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth. Uh, oftentimes, we think these things may happen by chance, 
Uh, but the Bible says God has complete control. Uh, so we think of nature, uh, the lar think of a large thing as all of nature. Um, and then as we step, I've got a few more down. Each one of these is going to get smaller and smaller. Uh, but he controls men. Like Think of, of crowds, groups of men. Um, he controls all men that dwell on earth. All of us, all mankind. Um, although it often may seem to us that things are out of control, God is really in control. Um, we see that in Daniel 4. It says, The Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. And then again in, in Daniel 2, it says, He removes kings and sets up kings. Uh, so again, it's not by chance that things work out the way they do. Uh, it's the Lord who is determined. Uh, remember, his plan is set. It's been set from the first day of creation. Uh, it's unchangeable. So it doesn't change. It doesn't get modified as, as the world goes. It's set. Um, and we continue to go down. So we talked about um, nature as a whole, mankind as a whole. Uh, God has control over not just those things, but over every single individual. First uh, Samuel 2 speaks of, uh, in verses 6 through 8, it says, The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit his seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. Uh, so man depends on God in all things. Um, the very hairs on our head are numbered. We, we hear uh, is the, the, is, um, also is the number of days in the life of in, in our lives on earth. Um, God even exercises control over uh, the free actions of us. Uh, we see that in Proverbs 16, verse 1, it says, The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Uh, Philippians 2, 16 says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Um, when we determine in our heart what to say or do, it's God who determines. Uh, and this is true not just for believers, but also for unbelievers. Um, so God preserves and governs. Um, his God's works of providence are his most holy, wise, and powerful preserving and governing of all his creatures and all their actions. Um, what I want to leave you with tonight or today is um, a paragraph from the Westminster Confession of Faith. Uh, this is another document that was put together um, to help teach us things of the Scripture. Again, it's, we talked about this before. Scripture is the only um, true word um, that we are to follow. Everything else is held far below. Uh, the same thing goes for this. Um, it is rooted in the Scriptures, and that's why we use it. But without the Scriptures, it's just a piece of paper. It's just words. It means nothing. So it's far, far below than, than the Bible is. But we use it here, like I say, is it rooted in the scriptures as something to use for us. So what I'm going to read, uh, chapter 5 in the Westminster Confession of Faith is actually about God's providence. And I thought uh, the first paragraph in that actually went well with this question tonight. It says, God, the great creator of all things, doth uphold, direct, dispose and govern all creatures, actions, and things from the greatest even to the least by his most wise and holy providence according to his infallible foreknowledge and the free and immutable counsel of his own will 
to the praise of the glory of his wisdom, power, justice, goodness, and mercy. So, as you think about this question, think about um, what are some things that God controls that maybe are hard for you to accept or believe, or maybe others, generally speaking, it's hard for them to accept or believe. Um, does seeing this question and answer and, and working through it um, help you to better understand God's providence um, and that God is in control here? Um, I hope that it does, and uh, I, there's a lot of deep things here and important things to know here tonight, and I, I, I pray that God has opened your eyes to, to see them, but I also pray that uh, and, and encourage you to, uh, if you don't completely understand or you're unsure what you believe or, or whether you accept these things, uh, talk to your parents about it. Uh, talk to me, talk to Ryan, talk to Jeremiah, or any of the other elders of the church. We'd be glad to uh, discuss these things further with you. Um, uh, hope you all have a, a good day.